Hey everyone, it's Jeff Farina with PocketNow.com, and recently you saw our unboxing of the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 Android device. Well, it's time to go ahead and take a look at some of the software that Sony has implemented on this device. Of course, one of the great things about Android is the manufacturer's ability to customize the UI as they see fit. So, let's take a look. All right, and we're back, and we're going to dive right in and give you a look at the software that Sony has incorporated into the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 Android device. As you can see here, they have a custom lock screen that has actually a different swipe method. Instead, you're going to swipe the unlocked triangle actually in a semicircle or a quarter circle motion, as you just saw there. Now, immediately we're greeted by your typical home screen layout. With the Sony version, you get your three home screens. You get one to the left, one to the right, and of course, your center home screen. Now what we have here is what's called Timescape, and that is a widget that actually will use Twitter, Facebook, your email applications, basically your social networking sites, and incorporate them all into one theme as you see here. You can actually scroll through these little tiles and actually see everything. Down here at the bottom we have our different icons for the corresponding social networks. So for example, this is more or less all of them, believe it or not. We have the phone, we have your text messaging, emails, music, it actually will incorporate everything, but then you're also going to have your Twitter, as well as your Facebook, and you can just scroll through these as you see fit. So this really incorporates a great experience into the device itself, and it really brings Twitter and some of these social networking aspects to the forefront. Now as you just saw there, when I pressed the home button, it asked me if I wanted to default to a certain launch here, instead of going to the default home screen that Sony includes, and I'll get into that a little bit later. When I talk about some of the alternatives, I'm not a huge fan of the Sony UI here. It's very different. It's not like Sense at all or any of the other Android skins for that matter. You know, TouchWiz from the Samsung as well as the vanilla. This is very different. In most cases, it may not be the most efficient. Once again, though, it is all personal preference. Now, as you see here, we have the app drawer that just slides straight up. We can go through all of our apps. And, of course, this is Android 1.6. So any app in the market that requires 2.0 or higher will not be compatible here. And we've talked about this numerous times in the past with applications such as the official Twitter application. It seems that Launcher Pro, which is an alternative to your home screen skin as well as just the overall skin of the device, also requires 2.0. So in this case, when you press the home button, you'll see that we've instead decided to use ADW Launcher. And that's simply because of the fact that Launcher Pro requires 2.0 in order to run. Now, because this device is off on AT&T and it's locked down to the AT&T network by AT&T, you're, of course, going to have some AT&T applications. As you can see here, we have the Family Manager, as well as the AT&T Hotspots, AT&T Map, Navigator, and Radio. There's also a few other choices that you'll see as you go through, such as the Mobi TV, etc., that are included by AT&T there. Now, this is something that is open to your own interpretation. Some people call these applications bloatware. Others think that they serve a purpose. Now, the ATT Navigator is definitely somewhat useful. However, the other ones may not be useful to you, such as the Family Manager, if you don't plan on giving this device to someone in your family, or have a family for that matter, that you want to use the device with, that may not be usable to you. So overall, your mileage may vary in terms of if you find a use for the AT&T applications that are pre-installed on this device. When it comes to posting simple updates on Facebook and tweets on Twitter, the device loads them extremely quickly. Just navigating through the device, pulling up your email, your text messages are very snappy. However, it almost seems like when you go into the browser at times, it is a little slower than some of the devices. And in the next video, the next software overview video, will actually give you a comparison next to the Samsung Galaxy S. And we'll test the speed of the browser on these two different devices here to show you which one actually comes up first. Right now, we'll actually go ahead and we'll open up pocketnow.com. On the browser, you can just give yourself a rough idea here by seeing this. Now you actually have to press the soft button here, the soft menu button, to bring up the ability to type in a website. And we'll go ahead and type in Pocket Now. Now we've already loaded it once before. As you'll see here, it queues up the site quickly. However, when it comes to actually loading the site, it takes a little bit longer than most, and it will actually hang on a very small percentage that is left. Now the Wi-Fi is very fast. We do have a full signal with the Wi-Fi, so it's nothing to do with that data rate there. It just almost seems like the device has a problem processing a page that has so much going on. And again, we will show you that in better detail when we compare it next to the Galaxy S in our next video. 
Now with the stock browser that is included on the device by default, you're not going to have the multi-touch support, unfortunately. You can always, of course, download a third-party browser to get the support, but right off the bat, you will not have it. As you can see here, we don't have the ability to pinch to zoom. We can, of course, navigate with our finger, and as you just saw there, it was actually selecting some links. But you're going to have to use these magnifying glass icons here in order to actually zoom in and zoom out on the desired text, which is kind of a downfall. Of course, you can always download a third party, but a lot of the times now these first party browsers that the manufacturers are including bundled on the device are capable of doing multi-touch. So Sony definitely needs to make up some time or some slack on that end right there. So as always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Please give us a thumbs up and stay tuned for our next video in the series, which would be our hardware overview. We'll give you a more in-depth look at the hardware of this device here, as well as what is running under the hood to power such snappy program response.